Today we're going to run through a three-wire level loop using notes from the field and following along in a graphic of the site based in AutoCAD. Well, first let's talk about the task. What are we doing? Well, here's the site alongside our notes. Let's look through the notes first to see what they tell us. Well, here we are starting at station 101, heading to station 103. The elevation at 101 is a 251.26. One of the things I appreciate the most about three-wire level loop notes is that they're so linear. The elevation for each point is directly across from the station name itself, and there are always one, two, three, four, five spaces in between each station where the math happens. In between each set of stations is the backsight and foresight that create the change in elevation from station to station. I'm going to create a separate video to talk about three-wire notes in a little more detail, including how to distribute error, but I'd like to keep this video walking through the concepts of level loops a little shorter, so we'll split the data up. All right, what did we do first? Per our notes, we started at 101 and went to 103. Here's the backsight average. Here's the foresight average. What do I mean by average? Well, quickly, when we look through our level reticle, we have a top line, middle line, and bottom line. When we observe that on top of a rod, we can see that our middle line takes a certain observation. And because the distance from the top line to the middle line and the middle line to the bottom line is the same, the average of the three, or each reading, added together and divided by three, should be the same as our reading at the middle line, also known as our level line. And you can see that reflected here in our math. Top line, middle line, bottom line, added together, divided by three, here's the average. Okay, so from the benchmark, we read a backside of 3.931. What does that mean exactly? Well, let's look at our graphic first. Here's our level setup. There's 0.101, our benchmark. This is where we read a 3931. Our foresight uh, average was a 5.321. Understanding how that works a little bit further. Okay, again, here's our level setup. Here's our level line reading level. Here's our original benchmark at 101, an elevation of 251.26. So our backsight reading was 3.931. That means that above 251.260 by a factor of 3.931 is where our level line resides. So 251.260 plus 3.931 equals our level line or the height of instrument. In this case, it's a 255.191. So that's where the level line passes through our level. Then we looked at our foresight, which again had an average of 5.321. So from that level line, we're measuring down to the ground, 5.321. Notice that this number is bigger than the number at our backside. That means it's farther from our level line to the ground, or it means that 103 is lower than 101, right? Further down to the ground from the level line means this section of ground is lower than the previous. Again, the reading was 5.321 measured down from our level line. That's 255.191 minus 5.321 equals our elevation at 103, that's 249.870. Okay, let's quickly talk our way through the next two. We're gonna transfer this elevation at 103 down to our next spot, 249.870. We're gonna remind ourselves what's going on from the graphic. Okay, now we're going from 103 to 104. That's mirrored in our notes, 103 to 104. Here's our backside average, here's our foresight average. The foresight's bigger again, that means that 104 is even lower than 103. Okay, let's look at our profile again. 103, reading our backsight of 2.492 plus the 249.870 equals our level line of 252.362. That's our height of instrument being carried across to our foresight reading, 252.362 minus 2.99, here's our new elevation, 249.372 at 104. Okay, what's next from 104? Let's look at the graphic again. Coming off of 104, here's where our level is set up. We're closing back to our start point at 101. Uh, 
uh, you'll notice I numbered our observations. Here was our backsight one, foresight one, backsight two, foresight two. And here's our third setup, backsight three, foresight three. Notice how much longer backsight and foresight three are than the others in this level loop. You may have heard that balancing the legs of your level loop is important. Does that mean that this leg is going to introduce a greater error than the others? No. Balanced legs means that the distance from the backsight to the foresight are similar, not each individual leg. If you go back through our notes, you'll see that uh, in between 101 and 103, our backsight distance and foresight distance were similar. It's the same from 103 to 104, and it's the same from 104 back to 101. Each leg is similar to the other in that setup. Why is it so important that these two are the same? Let's look at one more example. So here we've got our level. Let's say that the purple line uh, is reading perfectly level. The green line is a representation of what it would look like if the level was reading outside of level. Maybe it's not calibrated correctly, it's been dropped, maybe it wasn't set up perfectly, but here's where it's reading. So um, we're reading about 7 tenths below the actual level line. I'm going to get rid of this. It doesn't apply in this particular example. How big of a deal is that when our individual legs are balanced to each other? I'm going to go ahead and mirror this information. I'm going to copy our discrepancy over. Okay. So let's say that the ground elevation is 100 and our actual level line is, let's just say, 105.7. But because of our error, we're reading 7 tenths lower than our level line. That would mean that we, from 100, measured up 105 instead in error, but then measured down 105 and got back down to 100 at the ground. Well, if we were reading level, we would have went from 100 up to 105.7 and then down 105.7 and still gotten 100. So when the same error is factored in on both sides equidistant, they actually cancel each other out and we can still take good readings. But let's see what happens when the two legs aren't balanced to each other. If I were to move this rod further down and extend that out of level observation, well, we've got a lot more than seven tenths going on in this case. So the error being factored in on one side of the math and factored out on the other wouldn't cancel each other out and that error would be introduced into our work. That's why the process of pegging a level is so powerful. Pegging a level is going through the process of verifying that the level that you're using is operating within tolerance. I do this every time a level has been out of my possession Anytime I buy a new one that's come from the vendor, whether they say it's been pegged or not, it's an excellent process to run through. All right, so again, okay, so we established an elevation at 104. We set up our level. We observed that we were 6.771 above our benchmark at 104. That created the elevation for our level line, 256, 143. Observed our foresight, which was 101 to be only 4.882, it's smaller than the backside, that means we're finally going back uphill, which is mirrored in our final elevation, 251.261. That's only one thousandth from our starting elevation. So our error for this closed loop is a positive one thousandth. There's a quick error check formula here in our notes. This isn't distributing error. Again, we'll discuss that separately. What this does is ask you to add up the sum of all of the averages from your backsite plus column and add that to your starting elevation and then add up the negative sum of everything from your foresight column averages. The resulting math should give you the same answer as your summary column on the right hand side of your notes. What this does is ensure that everything that you had in your averages was moved over to the summary column correctly so that the summary math has been back checked so that the two sets of math have been backchecked. Yes, in surveying, there's always a backcheck method. If you're not backchecking, you're allowing space for error. Errors are always more costly and more time consuming than backchecks. Don't forget that fact because keeping that simple truth in mind 
will save budgets and your future reputation. Perfection isn't the standard because we're just that good. We can say perfection is the standard because we do back checks every time without fail, catch every mistake, adjust, and improve. Thanks for visiting Lean Survey. There are plenty more best practices, quick tricks, and tip videos on the way. Be sure to like, leave a comment if you have recommendations for content. Click that subscribe button for more.